All right. So welcome, everyone. I am so excited that you uh, are here to th this afternoon or this evening, whatever you decide to tune into this. My name is Ebony Mukasa. My husband, Samuel, and I are the co-lead pastors of Experience Church International. And we are in the process of planning our Plan, Pray, Pursue 2022 Virtual Women's Conference. And so this has been a, an awesome experience. Last year was great. We did this last year. We got together and we sat down and we chatted with our speakers. And we're having an opportunity to do that again this year with this year's speakers. And so I would like to take a moment and go through this round table and ask each of you to introduce yourself. Tell us just really briefly about yourself, um, about your ministry or your business. And, uh, and then we're going to move on and, and get dive deep into uh, each of you and, and allow you to share some wisdom uh, this evening with our guests. So we're going to start with uh, Tammy. Hi, thank you. I am so excited to be here. Um, my name is Tammy Van Hoy, and I am the author of a book called Conversations at a Table for Two, Feeding a Hungry Soul. And what I love to do is help people with chaotic lives, cluttered minds, slow down long enough to stop living with their hair on fire and live with your heart on fire by just drawing near to God in deeper conversations. That's awesome. That's awesome. And Delonda, welcome. Hello. So happy to be here. I am Delonda Adams, founder of The Resting Place and leader of Girl Rest, where I lead women into rest through um, speaking, writing, and at retreats. Awesome. That's beautiful. So beautiful. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Sophie, and yes, many call me Sophie, and I love it. I am the I am the founder of Lori Coaching, as well as Z for Praise. I'm just someone who's passionate about helping students and women, um, specifically women um, fighting, struggling with infertility, and any other conditions that is related to that. Um, so yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Nice to meet all of you. Welcome, welcome. Tyra, thank you for joining us. Hi, I'm Tyra Tate, and I am the owner of Synergy Services Network. And with Synergy Services Network, we help others to be well and stay well. Awesome. And welcome, Tanya. Hi, I'm Tanya Harrison. I am CEO and founder of Signal Partners, and um, I help small business owners to uh, integrate innovative solutions so that they can more effectively and efficiently run their businesses. Wonderful. Welcome again, all of you all. Thank you again. You know, we do these round talks. It's an opportunity for us to allow those who are checking out the, the conference, those who've already registered, those who are thinking about registering, to give them an opportunity to meet all of us so that they can connect with us and they can kind of say, look, I want to I want to get some more information. I want to hear that person speak and I want to hear uh, more about what they what their their journey has been, what their ministry is about or what their their business is about. And so this year, what we did was, you know, uh, our our uh, theme this year is sore, sore. And we uh, just last year, it was advanced and. Last year we were we were in the middle of COVID, right? And uh, everyone just really we're, we're coming. Actually, we were coming out of COVID because it was in 2021 January. But Advance was really about pushing forward uh, through the challenges that many people face. People face illnesses, and they face uh, loss of family members, loved ones, and uh, they face loss of businesses, and many people loss of homes, and it was just a time of loss, and it seemed necessary to help push people forward, right? And so that's what was last year, and this year we decided we wanted to help people soar. Now, what is soar about? Soar is really about surrendering to God, right? Because oftentimes, what we don't realize that happens when a bird soars and soar, we know we can think of an eagle and they're high in the sky. I mean, they are as high as you could think, as you can imagine, right? 
But what gets a bird that high is not even their own energy. It's not even their own effort. What they do is they take flight and they wait for a current to come, a current of wind that comes under their wings and they ride that, that current, right? It's almost like riding the wave, right? When people are, are um, what is that? Uh, I, I want to say skiing, but it's not skiing. When they're surfing, ride the wave, right? So soaring is riding the wave in a sense of a, of a current of air. And so what is that current in our lives? That current is Jesus. That current is the Holy Spirit. And so soaring is almost a type of, it is a moment of surrender and letting God take you higher. And so that's what this conference is about. So I did a little internet stalking, as they call it. And I went through a lot of you all social media, everyone, I'd love for you all uh, to take a look in the comments and uh, in the uh, description of this video and go follow each and every one of these dynamic women. You will be blessed and inspired through the content that they put out on social media. But I wanted to go through and I'm going to uh, ask a few questions and, and just for you all to share your heart, share your thoughts about what you're doing. And so, Tammy, this is so awesome. You were going to speak to us about soaring in prayer, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm going to put on my glasses so I can read this properly. <laughs> and, and so you reference prayer. You just talked about your book, right, um, mm -hmm. that, that you just published. I encourage every woman to go and get this book. And you reference prayer as a conversation with God. Would you speak to us about briefly about that, a conversation with God? Yeah, um, it's two things. One, I found that I was, was talking with people, they would say to me, well, I don't know how to pray. And they had in their mind that it had to be this structured, magnificent thing. And I love sharing with people how it's a conversation. Grab the scripture, sit down and talk about the scripture with God. You can have prayer there. But um, in John 10, 10, it says that the enemy comes to steal and to kill and destroy. And he's, what he's destroying is the joy of fellowship with God. And that's what we get when we have those conversations with him. Yes. But a tool that I've seen him use is checklist Christianity. Check, I read a verse. Check, I'm reading it through the year. Just And we don't slow down and, and we miss the best parts, the conversations. So it's just melting into a conversation with God over scripture. And that's when we start to really feel that fellowship with him. That's beautiful. And I love that because, you know, um, I often get to tell this um, to people. And that is, you know, the, the our faith in Jesus, our faith with God is the only one that has a God that talks back to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. the truth. It's the only one that 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 you hear. There's a there's a conversation. There's an intimacy. There's a of back and forth going on. And that is so beautiful. And for the person who's uh, who's uh, t thinking of t this time that it's difficult to pray, you know, know that God wants to speak back to you. He wants to speak to your heart. I love that. And now, Tanya, I we're, we're going to be jumping around these topics because every single one of you all are, like I said, so unique and so gifted in your areas. But I read this and you said, in one of your posts, <laughs> she's looking like, what did I say? <laughs> yeah, because her her social media is so funny and so cute and so enlightening. I mean, just I, I follow it and I, I'm probably like her, her biggest fan because I like almost everything she puts out. You said your next level and you may have recorded this. It doesn't matter. But you spoke this. Your next level will require a new version of you. Tell what, like when you said that, that, that spoke to me, tell me what is, what can a woman get from, uh, what kind of understanding can she get from that? And what, what did, what did you mean when you posted that? I meant that it's all about growth, right? So as we go through these next levels and phases, it's about growing into something. Um, I can think back to when I was a new mom, right? That version, that mother of a toddler 
had to grow in order to become more effective as a mother of a teenager. I could not have stayed the same and been successful <laughs> just I, because I needed different tools and resources. Um, so what I meant to that is we're, we're constantly evolving and growing, you know, mm -hmm. as we go through this. Uh, and that's what we need in order to be successful. You know what yes. I mean? Um, I became a better mom by going through that, by reaching out to mentors, learning different things and stuff like that. Um, and I was able to grow as a person and help these two little beings <laughs> grow right. into these awesome young ladies. That's awesome. I agree. And I, it, it almost sounds like, you know, uh, at every, every stage that we go through, we're almost re-envisioning. We're, we're re-envisioning our lives. And I think that women need to know that there is liberty in that that it's okay to, to re-envision yourself, especially as you discover the gifts that God has given you and the and you start taking the opportunities that he's given you, the doors start opening. Um, I believe that is paramount. And, and so uh, uh, Tyra, speak to us just about, because about this vision, envisioning ourselves, why is it so important that we have a clear vision for our lives? Well, vision in of itself connotates light. And without light, there would be no sight. Mm. And therefore, vision illuminates possibilities, right? And clear vision helps provide direction. That's the most important thing. You have to know where you're going and where you're headed. That's it. Advice to the point. I love that. And so, uh, Delanda, you are our rest maven, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always, I always call her my rest practitioner. And and here's what I love, right? You 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 uh, historically you've had a ministry of uh, about grace as well, right? right. God's grace. Mm -hmm. And I read a post that you wrote, and and it it struck a chord in me, right? I'm going to read it. It says, in rest, I'm learning to be okay with the measure of grace given to me. Can you share what, what, is a, what, is it, what do you mean? What is a measure of grace and how does that apply to us individually? Amen. Okay. So in Ephesians 7, it tells us that God um, has given each one of us grace according to the measure of Christ's gift and so each and every one of us we we have the exact amount of grace that we need to do what we need to do in every season so i don't so i don't want to operate outside of that then i just find myself bumping my head and god's anointing he ain't there <laughs> so so i want to be so we want to always that's the only way we are going to soar well mm. when we are doing what we're supposed to be doing in every season, operating uh, in the in that grace that He's given us. That means the gifts, talents, whatever uh, our purpose at that point in time. So operating in that grace. That's beautiful. And I think of I often sometimes you think of we you know you hear the word empowerment used yeah. a lot right but mm -hmm. but where does that power I, you hear it all over the place yeah. right where does that power that that empowerment that power being put into where does that come from and and I always when I hear about that measure of grace mm -hmm. it's it's clear that that empowerment that is God empowering us yes. right to do what he has called us to do and that's yes. why every single one of us can say yes to, to the things that mm -hmm. God has called us to when it, when it's challenging, when it seems outside of your comfort zone, uh, you can say yes. Why? Because Delanda, that phrase, he's giving you a measure of grace. He's mm -hmm. giving you the empowerment that you need to do mm -hmm. what he's called you to do. And as you say, you said something so crucial in every season, because Tanya, that goes back to what you said mm -hmm. about, you know, uh, uh, growing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, evolve, allowing yourself to evolve, to mature uh, from a, a mother of a toddler to a mother of a teen, right? 
in that season, God's giving you a measure of grace to be the mom to the toddler. Yes. And then he's going to give you the measure of grace to be the mom to the teen, right? So God is good. I wanted Sophie, our faith coach. Come on. So, so Sophie, you, you, you're a Laurel. Say the name for me. Forgive me. It's Lori coaching. It's like a tongue twister. Why did I say it, Lori? That's so simple. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Lori, yeah. Lori, okay. So listen, you put this post out and, and I loved it. You said faith and mindset are two very important pillars that are essential to becoming the woman of the woman God is calling you to be. So you said faith and your mindset. Share briefly, why should we consider these as pillars first as opposed to others? Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> so, because we're living in a really chaotic time. I mean, just last week, I believe, I believe it was this past week, we had shootings in schools, right? Um, I mean, it's, we're living in a time where it's really like we have war, we have turmoil, um, fam division within the family. It's happening a lot. Yes. Um, we have different things that are striking into our communities. It takes faith <laughs> to wake up every day and continue to trust God. Yes. Um, once we have the faith, then the right mindset follows, right? I, I mean, I don't think we can afford to not have faith and not having the right mindset because it's gonna take us, it's gonna require faith to get mm -hmm. us through, to get right. us through this time, to get us through COVID-19, to get us through everything that is happening around us. And honestly, it would have been worse had it not been for the church who still yes. here praying, women like us who are praying, who are standing in the gap and you know, standing for our families, standing for our communities. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I mean when I say that. And we know that um, God, God's word says that, you know, what faith is, it's defined as what we do not see. Yes. We have to live as if we've already gone through COVID, like it's not the first pandemic. Um, we have to live as though we already have the victory. Um, so that's why. That's good. That's good. So those are pillars, meaning that those are the foundations that we can build upon. And I love that. Um, Tanya, I just want to go back to you because I, I this this other quote here, um, operations optimizer. Now, when I read that, I first said that took some real, some real thought and clarity to to put those two words together but what it is truthfully when i read it it sounds so intimidating operations optimizer how, it, it sounds so how can i as a as a single mom or how can i as a you know a, a nurse i'm not in necessarily uh, a business building leadership or something like that, or even ministry leadership. I'm just a, a regular person waking up every day providing for my family. How can I apply that mindset or, or even the strategy to my life, my ministry, or my business? Operations optimizer. So um, really the optimization part is about identifying minor um, tweaks <laughs> that make a major impact. So many times in our life, we feel that in order for me to do this, I have to totally change. So if I want to lose 30 pounds, I got to run five miles a day, don't eat nothing, only drink water. You know what I mean? When the reality of it is, is that if we can identify some minor things that we can start to tweak in the end together, they collectively, they make a major impact. Um, I think about when I first started out right going to church and I would look at the other Christians and they would quote scriptures and, and I'm like I can't even I'm in my bible I'm like I can't even find them where is it like you know right. but it was it was growing into that right so one of the things I started to do was 
read scriptures every day, right? So I would have a scripture and I meditated on it every week and I'd memorize it, you know what I mean? And then yeah. I became the person in the church where he <laughs> say scripture, I could flip to the scripture, I could quote it without, you know, referring back to it. But it's just those minor things that ended up making a major impact in my life. Um, so I, it wasn't meant to be intimidating, but it is about that optimization. And I think that it's something that we could do in every area of our life. You know what I mean? Start small, start yes. identifying those small things. And eventually you'll see the 30 pounds come off or whatever it is. <laughs> right. So that's, I love that, that you, so, so, and this is, and I said that because I want <clears throat> the women as they, uh, sometimes they look at our titles, right? And, they, and they're checking you out. They go look at your website and they're like, oh my goodness, this is, I, this won't even apply to my life. This, this is way over my head. But you said it so clearly. It's the little things. We can all begin to take those little steps, right? And the strategies that you're going to come and you're going to share with these women can be applied to the CEO of YOU Inc. <laughs> right first. If you don't have to be the CEO of a major corporation yet, if that's what God, if that's what you wanted, and God's got that lined up for you, that you're in the right place too. But every single you, your strategies and your uh, principles and your you know methodologies can be used across the board from the home to the corporate. And so, and that's why I use that term because when I was, I was like, I wanted to be honest, some women are looking at this and they may be saying, you know, this is way above my head. I don't need this, but you can take these strategies and your home can run just as efficient as any corporation, right? That's right. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, let's go to Tammy. So here, look, oh, this one is a good one. <laughs> this one is a good one. Um, I'm going to read another quote of yours. You have some good quotes. <laughs> <laughs> it's an in a world that's driven to do more, accomplish more, and achieve more with completed to-do lists. That's my thing. Oh, I love a check mark. And checklists being the mark of success, reading God's word can easily slip into something to complete. We miss the conversations God wanted to have with us along the way. And so our goal is to soar in our prayer life in this, in this conference. Give us two suggestions how we can tune into those conversations with God. Slow down. Slow down and make the appointments. And it, it goes back to what Tanya said about it's the littlest things. Make an appointment in your life, in your calendar. What's in your calendar, what you show up for is what's important to you. God's sitting at the table every day, ready to feed your soul. Are you going to leave him waiting and, or tell him, I'll see you later. So show up, make the appointment, and then have a place ready. You know, just know where you're going to go. Is it a favorite seat? Is it a comfy chair? Maybe you have a prayer closet. Maybe you have a special room. It doesn't have to be fancy though. It can just be a comfy chair, cup of tea, sit down with the word, have the word right there mm -hmm. and just show up, melt into the conversations, find some scripture, just one. And Tanya was talking about memorizing a word. Great. Grab the one word. God will show you which one it is. And go to it every day for a week and just talk about it with him. What else? Ask him, what else, God? What else do you want, to know, want me to know about you in this verse? What mm. else do you want me to know about how you see me in this verse? So that's good. That's good. You know, um, Delanda, uh, just piggybacking on that, you know, Tam, uh, Tammy, you said about uh, making an appointment, right? Of, mm -hmm. uh, of having a place that you meet God, you know, whether it's your favorite chair. We see Delanda's red chair back there. That, that <laughs> <red>. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, you know, favorite mm -hmm. place. Delanda, mm -hmm. what does rest? And with that in context, because the truth of the matter is sometimes those appointments and these conversations aren't happening because we're not setting boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. And so what does rest really have to do with soaring. I mean, like, aren't those contradictions? Aren't, aren't they? 
What what this rest? Love it. Love it. Is it rest just like we're not going higher when we rest in our week? Contra, okay. okay. Yes, yes, we're going higher. When you were talking about the eagle, I said, "Man, she just just took all my my talk." <laughs> <laughs> I said, like, "What I'm gonna say?" Uh, but rest uh, in when we rest, we're we're coming to Jesus, and that's that's waiting. That looks like uh, those that wait upon the Lord, because in that rest, I always say that we launch from a place. Of rest I love and that. whatever yeah. we're doing we're launching into our you know our home making home management into home life into ministry into business into work whatever that is and so when we launch from that place of rest spending time with the father mm -hmm. uh, then we're able to soar and in that those verses in Isaiah it tells us that they shall uh, run and not be weary and I found found it interesting that that were run didn't mean that it was anything about hustle or, or hurry or right. not it meant that you're going to be able to do whatever you need with unrestricted power wow without being restrained so we can't get that unless we are coming to Jesus and finding rest love that so when there is the the like you said you say that again we uh we launch coming from a place of rest mm -hmm. yes so this soaring is it, it, it there is a rest component in it you've got to be yes. and and i love how you you explain that you know your ministry is not about nap taking no no you, you say that often. Can you just just <laughs> explain that real quick because I want women to get a, a clear understanding that you're not coming here to tell women that to sleep and to be lazy and to to explain what you mean right. when you say rest, please. When when I say rest, every time when I say rest to women, they say, I, we ain't nobody got time to be sitting idle and I got too much to do. And uh, what are you doing? That's that's being lazy. And I'm not talking about being lazy. And I'm not talking about nap. Although I love me some naps and I take my naps. <laughs> but the rest that I'm talking about is, is truly trust. Um, and that trust comes from knowing that we need God each and every day. So we must come to him. Like he said, he said, come to me and yes. I will give you rest. That means that he is the rest that we are looking for. Everyone in the world is looking for rest. They're looking for freedom. They're looking for peace. And yes. they're trying yes. to find it in everything, but Jesus, they're, they're looking for the strategies and uh, every answer to life. And we can only find it when we rest. And a lot of times we look at rest as this gift that we get when the work is complete, mm. but the rest is always there. We don't, we don't work to rest. We rest and we work from that rest. That's good. And so everything that we do is from that place of rest, which is, and we live from that place of rest and we can do everything that we need to do and be who God created us to be from the place of rest as we find it for our souls and learn from, and learn from God and learn from Jesus. Yes. Because we're not, he's not just giving us rest. Right. We're also finding rest as we learn from him. So we're learning how to carry every load that is upon our shoulder and he's with us and carrying it. So that's why when we come out of that rest, we come out of the, the waiting and that waiting is just, you know, it's like our, a hopeful look, looking unto God in hopeful expectation. Um, yes, yes. And when we come out of that rest, man, we can soar, we can run, we can do this life uh, unrestricted, unrestrained. We can do it in less time than yeah, that's we so would have done it <laughs> right. without our own striving and our own trying to control everything and everybody. Oh, and so man. that's what I talk about is not just now. And it's something I just talked with a group of women today. And it's the gift that God has given us and we leave it on the table. You know how they say that you, why are you leaving money on the table? Why are you leaving rest on the table? 
That's good. That's good. Come on now. So everyone, as you all listen to this, clarity that even that we are resting, but it is it is not a uh, a position of retreat or a position of giving up um, or or depression or disappointment. No, this is God's gift to us. I want to shift a little bit because. I want to talk a little bit about the because one of the segments that's going to be taking place, which Tyra is going to be leading us um, in that segment. And I want to talk to um, Sophie and to Tyra real quick about this vision board. And, and I want to speak to Sophie first and then Tyra, I want you to to close us out. I got a, a real just question for you that is really personal. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in one moment. But Sophie, you talk about one in one of your posts about the power of declarations. And we know that when we move into this vision board segment, now we're actually uh, putting, we're starting to do some manual work, right? If you're going to do a vision board, I pray that everybody who attends will participate in this segment and, and order you a vision board kit and get yourself together. We have those available. But you said that the uh, there's power in our declarations. What do what power do our declarations have on the outcomes we desire to see in our lives? Because we're going to be putting declarations on these vision boards. Why is that so important? What power do these declarations have on 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 the outcomes we want to see in our lives? Yes. So the power of life and death is in the tongue. We learn it in the word. We read this verse, you know, on and over and over again. We can choose to speak life or take it away. Mm. It doesn't matter if that pregnancy test is negative. You can say, okay, God, I, I guess, I guess we're going to try again, right? You choose the words that you're going to speak. It doesn't matter if you see that period, one more period, you say, okay, well, I guess I'm get, I'm going to get ready to know my husband again. I'm going to go crying. Hey, we're going to practice some more, right? So we can choose the words that we are saying based on the circumstances that are in, uh, in front of us. If you're a student, maybe you can say, no devil, I know that's not enough. Okay, let me go get my A, right? Maybe you're going to work some things around and switch your schedule around and study some more, get a tutor, right? Um, we have to choose what we are going to say when we have those circumstances in front of us because what we say, what we are saying with our lips, wh what we say, proclaim, and confess can dictate the results. Mm. It doesn't matter what things look like declare otherwise that's okay? good we have to put into practice hebrews 11 right now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see and we got to see it before we see it okay so <laughs> it's, gonna take, it's gonna take faith definitely that's good i love that sophie that's another um facebook post that you need to put so i can ask you that question we need to see it before we see it, right? Oh, we see it, yeah. <laughs> so Tyra, let's talk about that seeing part. Now this vision board mm -hmm. is that seeing part, right? Like we are we are taking uh, you know, our declarations and we're writing them out so that we can read them and and we're we're taking uh pictures and all sorts of things. But we did a you did a, a vision board segment for us uh about two years ago when we had the plan, pray, pursue, and we had a workshop. This was prior to COVID. And um, that was my personally, my very first time doing a vision board. And, um, and like myself, what do you say? And what do you tell the woman who is having a bit of anxiety about participating in this vision board workshop? Because truthfully, Personally, my first time, I had some performance pressure, right? And I think, uh, I, I, if it's not my mistake, I've heard other women talk about going to these huge vision board events and things, and you have and you have all this stuff in front of you, and everybody's declaring, <laughs> and everybody's professing, and everybody's got, you know, all this. What do you say 
to us about this anxiety that may be surrounding this vision board segment? I would tell them what I had to tell myself because <laughs> I had some anxiety as well, kind of wanting it to be perfect and what am I going to put on it? But uh, first you have to stop and just breathe deeply, right? And acknowledge the anxiety. It's a real and valid feeling. However, it can block you from receiving what God wants you to, to place on this vision board, what he's downloading upon you. And then I would encourage her to press through, even with that little bit of anxiety or worry, concern, because this is not about anybody else yes. but her. And her aligning herself to God's purpose and mission for his, her life. Yes. No one needs to see it right? They don't have to see it unless you choose to share. And God will meet you where you are. This mm -hmm. is not a performance and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Yes. And before you can be anything for anybody else, before we can serve, you have to show up for yourself. Mm -hmm. So this is about you showing up for you and aligning yourself with God. That's the most important thing. And that's what I had to say to myself because I'm like, I'm not creative. How am I going to put it? No, this is about yeah. me connecting with God. And then you get your stuff, then you just prepare to do it, right? You get your stuff, you listen, oh, I like this picture. Whatever God is telling you to do or whatever you feel led to do, then mm -hmm. you just do it. You take a deep breath while you're doing it. Do it scared, worried, anxious. <laughs> you got this. Right. And I did it. <laughs> I love it. You are, the story is Ty, Ty, Tyra did this. Um, and everybody had a great time. We had a lot of stuff and, and stickers and folks left with stuff that looked like they was going to do 15 vision boards. I was like, all right. But um, she showed up at my house, right? And she was like, afterwards, because I'm leading the, the thing. And so I didn't really have a chance to do it. And she showed up and she's like, Ebony, let's get it done. Let's get it done. And here's what, truthfully, I still have my vision board on my desk because that was the vision board for 2020. And we all know what happened in 2020. And so um, what she said to me, which is what truly relieved most of the anxiety for me. And she was like, Ebony, you can always add to this. You can always, because I'm a finisher. And that's what most women, that's the anxiety. One of the anxieties that most women have is that I'm not going to finish it. Right. I got to leave here. With that vision board looking like a collage and looking like, uh, you know, perfect and with the, the corners and the, the little sprinkles and the glitter, it's got to be perfect. It's got to say perfect. Thing. <clears throat> and, and the challenge is, is like, oh, it has to be completely finished. And what Tyra shared with me was like, look, God is going to continue to download to you the things that he wants to, to remind you of, to re the things he wants you to envision, the dreams that he wants, that he has for you. You know, the scripture says that he has a plan for us, right? He has a future for us. He has in mind for us. And so um, that you can add to this as you go. It doesn't, you don't have to leave this event with, you know, it's not a contest, right? Tara? You're like, nobody has to see that thing. You, that's yours. And so I thank you for sharing that. And I, I look forward to you leading us through uh, that vision board segment. Um, let's go around real quick. We're going to get ready to close. Thank you all so generously for sharing. If you can just in, in one sentence or two, uh, go around and let's, we're going to start with uh, Tammy and we'll go to Delanda, Sophie, Tyra, and Tanya, right? And if you could just tell the women, why should they come to this event? Just real quick. Connection. It's a good time to connect. Connect with God. Connect with uh, fellow believers. Um, connect with his calling on your life. Because the enemy wants you to stay separated. He wants you yes. to feel alone. Because then he can feed you the lies. And mm -hmm. when you connect with others, you find out I'm not the only one going through that. So come and connect. With Love us. that. Thank you. Delonda. Amen. Um, just like Tammy, you're going to be connected with like-minded women who are also ready to soar in 2022. And also, if you have feeling like that you've been flapping your wings and not been soaring, you're going to yes. learn how to do that in rest. So come on through. Come <laughs> oh, on. <boy. laughs> I would say, why not? 
this is for you so show up for yourself oh, show up for yourself and i love um the timing of the event it's not on the 31st right it's not like on the first so it's right after a couple days of january so you still have a chance to shift and make changes around whatever you need to do so this is about you show up and plan you got a plan to plan that's oh what i keep saying about this event let's <laughs> plan to plan so I'm hoping to see you there. Awesome. And we have Tyra. Oh, we all need support and encouragement. And we also need to connect with our inner girl, right? <laughs> so this has always been about having fun. I always have fun with Pastor Ebony and the ladies. And so <laughs> let your hair down and just have fun. So come and have fun. That's why you need to be there. Yes, I love it. And Tanya. Um, first of all, have you heard these ladies? <laughs> to me, that's all the reason. But aside from that, just to be in the virtual room with other people, like everyone has said, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? A room full of awesome women that are coming together to do the same thing that you're doing, to learn, grow, to support each other. It's an awesome thing to know that the woman beside you is rooting for you. You yes. know what I mean? And yes. I think that this is the experience that'll give them that. Awesome. Well, I thank you all so much for for being so generous this evening and for sharing your insights and, and giving us a little a peek into your personalities and your views and, and just the, the ministry and the wisdom that God has given you. I speak to every woman who uh, tunes into this. Uh, know that we want you here. Know that we have, as a team, we're already praying for you. Um, and that if you have any uh, challenges, reach out to our ministry uh, so that we can get you here. Uh, you know, don't delay, don't, don't procrastinate, don't put it off. Um, if you tuned in, you're in the right place. It's not by accident that you tuned in this evening or, or whenever you get an opportunity to listen to this. Um, it is not by chance. It's purpose for you to be with us. And so we look forward to January 7th through the 8th. We're going to have a good time. We've got giveaways that we're going to be doing. We've got games we're going to play. We've got these awesome talks. Every single woman here is ready and willing to share with you. So um, I look forward to talking with you all shortly and good night, good afternoon, good morning, ladies. Uh, we look forward to, to seeing you at Plan, Pray, Pursue 2022.